Hello, my name is Steve Doves, and this morning I would like to present to you one experiment in an ongoing line of research conducted by one of the country's premier mycological experts and professor of plant biological sciences at Augsburg College. The pathogen of interest in this line of research is Sclerotinia sclerotium. What it causes is a condition called white mold disease and the current preventative measures involve fungicides that are a potential threat in harming human life as well as the environment local to where these plants and treatments are. Bayer Crop Science uses a fung fungicide market in, under the name Stratego. Directly on the instructions label is the warning, the crop safety of all potential tank mixes, including additives and other pesticides on all crops, has not been tested. Before applying any tank mix mixture not specifically recommended on this label, the safety to the target crop should be confirmed. Not even looking at the potential harms of everything around the crop, this clearly shows that contraindications are present and precise combinations of herbicides, insecticides, etc., if not carefully monitored, could cause even further damage to the crop. Monsanto's answer to this pathogen is the leading brand Roundup Ready. Although according to an article off of the Organic Consumers website, the primary active ingredient, glyphosate, could possibly pose potential problems in future crops post-treatment. Now the reason we bring this up is the very basis of what drives this research. Given the results observed from previous experiments, we posit that recruitment of these endophytes within a living soybean plant will present a similar response in which these plants will exhibit an increase in resistance to, to Sclerotinia sclerotium. A brief overview of what we'll be discussing moving forward is the discovery of in inhibition of pathogenic growth by an endophyte, how this endophyte was identified, application of secondary metabolites in the lab, current research of possible treatment, and the data and, and results from those recent efforts. Here you can see our multiple variants, multiple strains of, of fungi, all fusarium. You can notice the diversity of the many fungal endophytes and how they vary in characteristic, characteristics. Now the soils in the state of Minnesota carry many of these endophytes and depending on what region, often carry multiple combinations of them. During this study, to identify them, an observation was made that one in particular had produced a zone of inhibition between itself and other itself and sclerotinia. The focus of this study was to identify which one it was. To do this, they had to isolate the fungus, culture a single spore. From there, they had to extract the genome DNA and then used PCR sequence. Once this sequence, once the product of the PCR was sequenced, they could then blast it against other known, other known Fusarium IDs, uh, but databases. It was discovered that the fungus in question was Fusarium equiseti. Once this fungus was identified, a series of experiments conducted by Megan Rich and Grace Edgar, both former students of Dr. Impaletti, in which they attempted to answer the question of how effective is Fusarium equiseti in inhibiting growth of sclerotinia. In this slide, Grace had applied. Oh, cool. Grace had plated on this both the Fusarium equiseti along with other Fusarium strains and on the right side Sclerotinia sclerotia. What you'll notice in all three plates is that there's a zone of inhibition that's preventing growth from Sclerotinia into the portions in which the endophytes existed.
In the follow-up study, the metabolites themselves were extracted and mixed into the media using various varying concentrations. Going from left to right, you can see an obvious difference in growth as concentrations increased from 0 to 5%, 10%, and finally 20%. Continuing on along this path, another experiment was set to answer the question of how we could use a known pathogen to treat against another known pathogen. In the animal world, a concept that is widely used and proven to be effective was incorporated. The concept of vaccination in principle relies on educating the immune system to respond quicker to the disease causing agent. In the plant world although, such a response is yet to be identified in the very least and soybean plants. Now after these promising results, Dr. Ampoletti and Ashley Johnson, another student, developed an experimental design in which each plant was grown in a pot that consisted of a layer of vermiculite, the media from a petri dish in which known pathogens, including equisetti, were cultivated. It was then covered by another layer of vermiculite. The seed was allowed to grow. Once, grow to, once it had grown to a certain height, or once it had developed to a certain stage, the first trifoliate was cut off, and they attached a pipette tip containing inoculum, which held within that sclerotinia. As the experiment proceeded, a rating system had to be developed to categorize the severity of the symptoms. As you can see here, in this example, this one would be just between one very near to two. One being no, or zero being no symptoms, one being a lesion on part of the stem, part of the petiole, two a lesion that extends the entire petiole, but there is none on the stem. The third, third rank of severity is a lesion that extends the entire petiole, invades into the stem, but only gets to a little, but is less than 2.5 centimeters. The highest degree that was observed in this experiment of the severity was a lesion that extended the entire petiole onto the stem and exceeded on the stem past 2.5 centimeters. Here we have a graph displaying the results from the study. What you'll notice immediately is an alarming trend that the treatment had relatively insignificant differences. What you can see along the, the left side here, along the y-axis, are going to be the degrees of severity, or the ranking that we just showed you. Along the bottom are going to be multiple strains, along with two controls, but multiple strains of fusarium. One of the strains didn't grow, as well as one of the controls, which are noted as well. Now a quick recap, we discussed the past experiments in which we discovered that by using the endophytes we could gain some level of resistance to sclerotinia. We talked about our current experiment in which we tried to actually apply a treatment which sadly was not effective. And we discussed the results which displayed that it was not effective. Moving forward, we concluded that by applying endophytes in this way, it didn't affect the plant's resistance. A different approach is required, one that could possibly involve a different application in implementing the treatment, or even be to use the metabolites produced by the endophytes. For their efforts, we would like to give a great thanks to Dr. Ann Impolitti, along with multiple individuals, including Megan Rich, Grace Edgar, and Ashley Johnson.